What's good, year 11? This is a lesson 3, exercise 6c, the intercept slope form of the equation of a straight line. You'll notice that these lesson topics, the titles get longer and longer and a bit more daunting as we go along, but each title does have a reference of some sort to what we're talking about. Now, if you're wondering why I'm talking a little bit softer than usual, it's because my son is asleep and his room is directly above me. So I'm trying to be as quiet as possible so that way I don't wake him. So, we are so used to looking at lines that take the form of y equals mx plus c. What does that mean? So when we've been looking at different types of um, different lines of uh, equations, we all have some format that looks like y equals, maybe you can have 3x plus 2, or y equals um, 9 over 2x minus 4. Heck, we might even have a format where it looks like y equals 3, take away 0.5x. And there's always going to be some commonality between all of these uh, equations. The first one is that there is always going to be a number in front of an x. Okay. In this case, this number in front of x is a 3, this one is a 9 over 2, or 4.5 or 4.5, and, and they're, they're both the same thing. Uh, in this case here, yeah, this one, you've got to be careful because that negative is included, this one is negative 0.5. This right here, in front of in front of the x, this is what's considered the gradient or the slope of that graph. Um, any number that is in front of the x, the coefficient that is in front of the x, is considered the slope. We um, dictate this by the letter m. So when we have this format y equals mx plus c, in this case the m in this equation is 3. The m in this equation is negative 0.5. When your graph maybe looks like this, y equals x plus 2, not worrying about the plus 2, you'll notice that there is no number in front of the x, but you wouldn't say that the gradient is 0 just because there's no number there. Technically, there is an invisible one. So there's one lots of those x. So you would say that the gradient, or the m value in this case, is 1. Uh, the thing that also tags along, depending on the format in which it's written, this is considered the C. And the general form of it is plus C, but if, if it is a negative number, in this case here, you'll say that your C value is negative 4. In this case, our C value for this equation is 2, as in 2. This one's a bit tricky, because it's not obvious, but because we um, are not associating the C value with what's in front of the X, it's a thing that's by itself. In this case, it is 3. The C value in this case is 3. But be careful, because you might have something that looks like this, where there's a negative in front of it. In this case, the C value is negative 3. Um, all these numbers show our different characteristics. Namely, the number that's in front of the x is the gradient, as is what I said before. And the other number, the c, that number that tags along, that does not have an association with the x, this is called uh, the y-intercept, or the constant of the equation. Now, I've been blabbing on about y equals mx plus c. Uh, this form is the traditional form, but for the sake of this exercise and also for the sake of your calculator, we now have to be um, used to the general form of y equals a plus bx. Y equals a plus bx. And all this means is instead of using the letter c, we're going to use the letter a and we're going to put it in front. And instead of using the letter M, we're going to use the letter B. And we're going to put that uh, as the second term. Um, while the M is used as a letter, I'm not too sure. Uh, the C is stands for the constant, but 
M, not too sure, maybe you can do a quick Google as, why, as to why the petitions use the letter M. But to keep it general, let's use A and B. A is the y-intercept of the graph, and B is the gradient, or the slope of the graph, also known as the coefficient. Um, just be wary that the y-intercept, when we say the y-intercept, say for instance we have a graph that looks like this. And this is our y and this is our x. When we talk about the line, that point there is considered our y-intercept. Okay, for this example. That point there is considered our x-intercept because it's the point where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, um, and this also can work for negatives as well. This is my, my poorly sketched axis. In this case, there's our one to set. So whatever that number is, that constant, that times one, um, and graph where it cuts that y-axis is determined by that number. And the second thing we have to look at is if the equation is not in the intercept slope form, so the y equals some number plus some number times x, you will need to use your skills and specifically your algebraic manipulation skills, as fancy as it sounds. Um, from test one, and you have to rearrange the equation to make it look like a y equals. So you might have an equation that looks like y plus x is equal to, I mean, two x is equal to three. This isn't in the form of y equals. You have to make it into the form of y equals. Then you can talk about what the a and the b values are. Okay. Uh, again, you can use your calculator and use the solve function. Um, we're going to look at an example here. And we're going to find the intercept and the slope of a line from its equation using the a plus bx um, terminology. So, find the intercept and the slope um, of a line from its equation y equals minus 6 plus 9x. So the intercept, we're just going to write um, y dash int. This is going to be equal to what that number is that's taken along by itself. In this case, it's negative 6. Y intercept is negative 6. Um, or if you want to put it in coordination format, you will put it as 0, comma, negative 6. Because for every y intercept, it's always going to equal um, 0 at x. Okay? And you will get why this is the case when you actually sketch some graphs. Um, the other thing it's going to look for is the slope. In this case, our slope is just the number that is in front of the x, coefficient of x. Just be wary of what the sign is. In this case, our slope or gradient is 9. So when we were to sketch this, for every unit that goes across 1, it's going up by 9. Because this is a pretty high number, this slope is going to be quite steep. Okay. Second question, um, y equals 10 minus 5x, y int is equal to the number that's by itself, 10. There are negative in front of it, so we just say that it's 10. The slope, the coefficient of x, uh, in this case it's 5, be careful, there is a negative, so our slope in this case is negative 5. Because it is a negative number as a slope, um, as our line when sketch will go down you know, from left to right, and for every one unit that goes across, it's going to go down 5 units. Again, quite a slope, uh, slope hill going down, it's not as slope as this 9 going upwards, but still relatively steep. Last one, we're looking at a y minus 4x equals 5. Now, Ooh, unfortunately, this isn't in the form of y equals. So I want to get it into the form of y equals. I want y by itself. And tagging along with this y is this minus 4x. So to get rid of this minus 4x, I'm simply going to do the opposite operation, and that's add 4x. But whatever I do to the left, I do to the right. As a consequence, these two did cancel because minus 4x plus 4x equals 0. It's a whole point. We're trying to get y by itself. But on the right hand side, we left that 5 plus 4x. Now it's in that form that we were talking about before. 
3a plus bx. So in this case here, um, I'm just going to write it to the side, and then we have a room here. The y intercept, this would be in the, um, the number that's taken by itself, so this would be 5. And the slope, in this case, number tagging in front of the x, the coefficient of x, this is 4. Positive number, so we just leave it as 4. Okay. Um, when, I forgot to, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. For b, this y intercept, again, this can be considered as 0, 10. This is the coordinate format um, for the y intercepts. And for this one here, the coordinate format is. 0,5. Whenever we talk about a y intercept, we always say 0, 0,5 because this is our x. Our x value is always going to equal 0, like we've seen before. But if we're going to talk about an x intercept, the number that it hits x on the x axis will go first, comma, and our y value in this case will be 0. But you don't have to see that for now, that will pop up later on. Example 2 is going to be looking at Writing down the equations of a straight line in the form of y with a plus bx given the opposite. Where so we're given the y intercept and the slope as values, we have to get it in the form of y equals. So in this case, uh, where the y intercept happens is at 2, so our a value, we just replace it as 2, and the slope is at negative 5, so this will be minus 5. X. It's actually quite simple. And the second one, the y intercept is at negative 3 and the slope is at 2, so in the format we're going to write it as y is equal to, in this case, negative 3, the slope is 2, so it is plus 2. There's our answer. Um, sometimes you might get an answer that could look like this. What they've done is just swap the terms around. This is still valid as an answer. Um, just be mindful about where those negative signs go. Because if it was a negative in front of that 3, it becomes a takeaway 3 from 2x. Okay. All right. Let's look at this last part here. In this example here, we're going to sketch the graph of y equals 8 plus 2x. Now, these are where the important features pop in when trying to sketch this. Now you'll notice that the y graph here don't have values popped in um, and there's a specific reason why and a lot of kids, a lot of students will fall into this trap where they think, oh this we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we'll make the y intercept here and then put the line <coughs> going up, but this right here uh, and more importantly that positive this is indicating that this line is going up from left to right. So instead of having the line start here going up, I'm not going to really show that much information. So maybe um, as each numbers go up, maybe we can make it go up by two uh, or even four. Okay. Um, in this case, let's make it four. Okay. Make it four. Now let's make it two. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Okay, so the y intercept that we were talking about, that point where it, it's, it cuts the y axis, that's going to be at x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 8. And you notice why I said x is equal to 0, because along that line, where it hits 0, and where it hits y is equal to 8, that's where I intercept, that's where a line cuts, and it's always going to be at x equals 0. No matter what <coughs> y intercept number you have, it will always be at x is equal to 0. Now, this plus 2x, the plus is indicating it's going left to right up, and the 2 is indicating that for every step we go across by 1, remember this is 1, it's going up 
by two units. And so every time we go across by one, we're going up by two. Every time we go across by one, we're going up by two. One, two. One, two. Now I know that it seems like very confusing that I'm saying one across and two, even though we're showing two blocks going across and one going up. This all has to do with the scale that I'm talking about. Because what's important is the representation of the numbers on both the X and the Y. Two blocks indicates one across, okay? Because this is how it's been scaled. I chose a scale of the Y axis. For every one block we go up by, it's considered two units. So we're gonna be careful. One unit across, because it's one. Two units up, because it goes up by two. Okay, so for those who are getting confused, oh, wait, it's going two across, one up, is represented by the axis units okay now we've got these points we can go ahead and mr herman kind of poorly try to sketch it um, i could try putting a line on here i haven't experimented with it before um, i don't know where the line function is there we go line tool let's see if this works good Ooh, yeah buddy sweet all right we've got a line can we make sure that if we click out yes we have a line we have a line! Uh, the shape layer must be rasterized before proceeding. Sure, let's rasterize it. I don't know what that means. Um, all I care about is drawing those two arrows, which is now not letting me. I knew was a curse to put that line in. Anyways, that is me sketching the graph. I've got to do one more thing. I've got to label this graph y equals a plus 2x. I'm going to pause the video and try to figure out what's going on. So hopefully I can put this um, equation next to the line. Give me two seconds, guys. Coolies, magoolies. I figured it out. You just have to change the layer. Um, I'm so used to Photoshop. Uh, I use it quite a bit. But when actually lighting on... Um, lesson plans and showing things off worksheets i'm still getting the hang of it but <clears throat> this is a, a learning process for both you and i anyways y equals 8 plus 2x this always has to go next to the line um, and that is how we sketch the graph of y equals 8 plus 2x if this was 8 minus 2x the minus 1 indicator will go down from it to and this concludes this lesson of lesson three exercise 6c you know the drill check your log sheet see which questions you need to do wash your hands sneeze into your elbow stay inside and try to um find ways to keep yourself sane um whether that's you're nurturing something you've got a little art project of some sort or um, you're playing some board games or you're socializing obviously online um, find those ways. I know self-isolation can get quite tricky. Um, and, you know, being social butterflies that we are, we're so used to going out. So find the things that make you sane. How long this is going to last for, I'm not too sure. Um, I don't want to turn this into a little um, therapy session, but please, guys, take care of yourselves. I, I know it's really, really tricky, and I really, really I commend you guys for the efforts that you're putting into not only self-isolating but also having to learn online and learn remotely without your peers, without me being there. It, it I can imagine it, it's quite tricky. So it does have its, it has its challenges. Um, but as long as you're finding your ways to keep yourself sane, then we can get through this. All right, that is me wrapping it up. I'll see you guys in the next video. Tell you all.